Return of the mask, the new push by local leaders to get New Yorkers to mask back up indoors. A break from the humidity today, but temperatures are back to the low 90s Tuesday. Star Power in Westchester. New York Live shows you the A-listers' favorite playhouse in the lower Hudson Valley. This is News 4 Now for July 19th. I'm Jen Maxfield. As COVID cases rise yet again, there's a renewed push to bring back mask mandates indoors. The American Academy of Pediatrics is now recommending that everyone over the age of two wear a mask when schools return this fall. News 4's Tracy Strahan has more on the leaders calling for New Yorkers to mask back up. Well, as you can see, testing still available here at the Staten Island Ferry Terminal. Vaccines? Not so much, but as positivity rates continue to rise, there's talk about the masks coming back for indoor use. Well, this is something that went into effect on the West Coast over the weekend, specifically in Los Angeles County. That mask mandate is now required for everyone there indoors, whether they've been vaccinated or not. Now here on Staten Island, there are still pockets of neighborhoods like the South Shore or Port Richmond, where the vaccine rate remains below 50%. Mobile vaccine clinics in seven different locations stopped over the weekend. Now, the state's positivity rate as of Saturday was 1.51%. That's continuing its rise from 1.02% just a week earlier. City Councilman and Health Committee Chair Mark Levine said either the city or the state's health department should reinstate the indoor mask mandate. Emerging data from the CDC suggests the same. I would encourage people to speak to their primary care doctors immediately and find out you know, what their thoughts are on wearing a mask if they're indoors. As of Saturday, Governor Cuomo's office released data saying the highest rate of positive infection was here on Staten Island, where 1.88% of COVID tests came back positive. Mayor de Blasio said he's not recommending that indoor mask mandate yet, but vows to continue to follow the data. On Staten Island, Tracy Strahan, News 4 New York. One of the first mass vaccination sites on Long Island has closed. These were the long lines when the drive through site at Jones Beach opened in January, but now demand is so low, Governor Cuomo is closing the state-run site along with three others upstate to shift resources to areas with low vaccination rates. In a MacGyver-type move, an NYPD officer used a potato chip bag and a roll of tape to save a man who'd been stabbed. Heroics. The man was found stabbed in the chest on Lenox Avenue on July 7th. Now in the video, you can see the officer empty the chip bag and ask witnesses to get tape from a nearby store. The video then shows the officers taping the bag onto the stab wound to stop the bleeding until more help could arrive. The man was hospitalized and survived. The NYC Sheriff's Office sees dozens of vehicles that had fake license plates. Deputy sheriffs say they spotted 43 vehicles with counterfeit paper license plates this weekend. This happened in three neighborhoods, Canarsie, Flatbush and Flatlands. Investigators say fake license plates are used to evade speed cameras, tolls and parking tickets. Over the last month, 115 vehicles have been caught with fake plates in the city. Foodies all over the city are celebrating. New York City Restaurant Week has begun. The semi-annual event returns with in-person dining for the first time since the start of the pandemic. More than 500 restaurants will provide an entree and at least one side for $21 or $39. You can also try the new signature dining experience priced at $125 for three or more courses with perks. Restaurant Week actually runs a month through August 22nd to help the restaurant industry recover from the pandemic. A Cold War era plane is returning to the Intrepid. The vintage Douglas F-4D Skyray jet fighter will arrive on July 27th. This particular Skyray was deployed on the Intrepid when the aircraft carrier was in service between June 1961 and March 1962. The plane will be moved from its location in Connecticut by barge down the Hudson River. Well, finally a break from the heat, but Raphael, is it going to stick around? 
Well, we continue to enjoy this break from the high humidity. Temperatures are still warm out there this evening, and they're going to stay on the comfortable side overnight tonight, starting out with some 80s, maybe doing dinner outside, T-shirt weather there, eventually falling back down to the 70s. Not a whole lot of sunshine during the early evening. We will see some clearing later on in the overnight as temperatures drop back down to the low 70s by Tuesday morning. A much brighter start expected tomorrow. You can see hour by hour, uh, the clouds kind of hanging around early on, but then they start to clear away as we head throughout the overnight. Overnight tomorrow morning, your Tuesday morning commute pretty much drama free. Temperatures starting out in the 70s, so it's a few clouds overnight tonight. Nice and refreshing, a sign of this cooler, more refreshing air. 59, you're low in Monticello. In the city, though, it's going to be relatively mild with temperatures staying in the 70s. Same story across much of Nassau County. It's a playhouse that brings the stars out. New York Live heads to Westchester to show you the Bedford Playhouse. We all know how much a local theater means to its community, and after being closed for 18 months, the Bedford Playhouse is finally reopened. So today, we're checking it out. I've been in here for a little bit, and I could tell that this is a lot more than just a theater. So I, I would love for you to explain to anybody who's never been here, how would you explain the Bedford Playhouse? We really are the destination for Lower Hudson Valley. It's entertainment, education programming. It's also community programming. You know, we're trying to serve as many people as we possibly can. You can come here any night of the week and see something completely different. First of all, it is so beautiful in here. Tell me about this piano. So this piano was donated by uh, Paul and Kathy Schaefer, and uh, this is the actual piano from Late Night with David Letterman. Let's mm -hmm. just say somebody's here on any given day. Mm -hmm. Can you name drop a couple of the people who they might find here? Of course, John Krasinski and Emily Blunt are residents of the area. Uh, Ryan Reynolds lives in the area. And Michael Douglas and Catherine Zeta-Jones used to have a house here in Bedford, so uh, you would see them as well. Listen, Bedford's the place to be. <laughs> so this is our smallest space. The recliners come out and we have uh, dinner tables that come in, so you can do dinner and a movie. This theater is the Clive, uh, the Clive which Davis. is after Mr. Davis, of course. We also do uh, some of our smaller uh, talkbacks and Q&As in this room. So yeah. this is our main theater. First run films, classic films, anything that we would do uh, that's a larger scale would be into the, in this space. We also do uh, music performances on the stage. We do comedy nights. So it really is a, a, a broad range of programming. We have our brand new Broadway and Bedford series right over here on the Playhouse lawn. We've got four Broadway stars coming in every single, uh, every single step of the series. With Broadway opening up in September, this is a great preview for that because we have all of those people coming up from New York to sing for the Bedford community. Hoagie, it has been a pleasure. Thank you so I, I, much. I don't know if you're going to be able to get rid of me. I'm going to be back. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you again tomorrow.